Hi, Laura. Welcome to Artist Spotlight 2020 with Millstream Arts Festival and the St. Cloud Downtown Art Crawl. I'm really happy to have you with us. And I know you've been a best in show judge for um, Millstream, right? You've helped us out in that way. And it's nice to have you on the artist side of our conversation. So could you start by sharing with us who you are and what you do and, and a little bit about your background? Sure. Um, so obviously I'm Laura and, um, I'm a stained glass mosaic artist. And so for people who aren't familiar, familiar with what a mosaic is, basically what I do is, um, I cut stained glass sheets so I can kind of show you. Yeah, please I, stain, do. I cut like, um, so this is stained glass right here and I cut it with a cool. nippers and everything I do is from hand and, um, and then I pretty much assemble the pieces to create a picture and um, I adhere it to a backer board like this. And then the final thing that I do is grouting it. And um, yeah, that's what that's what I do. And a little bit of my background is that I started, um, well, let's go, should we go way back? <laughs> as far back as you want to, Laura. This is your time. Sure. Share with us. Okay. <laughs> Um, so I graduated from the College of St. Benedict's in 2009 with a, <laughs> yep, mm -hmm. and I started with, I, it was an art degree, but I had an emphasis in painting. So really I had a painting, I'm, I'm a painter at heart. Mm -hmm. And um, from there then I uh, basically was, in, I've been employed with the Paramount Center for the Arts for almost 10 years now. And uh and I started in doing mosaics from um, from doing two public art pieces with the Paramount. The Paramount was con commissioned to do some public art pieces that you can see around downtown St. Cloud. Um, and so from there, that's where I fell in love with doing mosaics. Uh, and they had a great, they have, I should say, they have a great mosaic studio in, um, in the Paramount. So you're able to be around yes, it a, quite a bit and 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 see a lot of um, the work and 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 I'm sure um, be engaged in it that way also. Mm hmm. Absolutely. And what what mm -hmm. are the pieces in Saint Cloud that you did for the Paramount? What was that? Um, so, so there are a few, if, um, there's one that's really well known that I think people would probably see if they're downtown or even if they go to the Paramount quite a bit. Um, but it's on the corner of 9th and, and West St. Germain and it's a kitty corner from the Paramount and it's a big giant glass mosaic sculpture. And it's one of Bela Patheo's, uh, it was based off of Bela Patheo's, one of his paintings. And so I had a hand in helping with creating that sculpture. And then there's another one, and this is where I really fell in love with the process of doing mosaics, was the glass on glass mosaic that's at the St. Cloud Hospital. And that one was, the Paramount was commissioned to do that mosaic for people who have donated tissue and organs and so it was a mosaic to kind of a memory or an honorarium for people who have donated to give life to other people and so from there that's when like I said that's where I really just fell in love with the medium I just really liked the tangible aspect of it of being able to take a piece of glass and shape it and form it into many other pieces because I think with mosaics it's you take a piece of glass or what mosaic artists call a tess tesserae um and, and it can't really it doesn't really have any significance if it's alone if it's by itself but when you add very many pieces to it to arrange it into a picture that's when it speaks so much more and be more of a creative piece cool wonderful, wonderful. um so with the uh, so with mosaic pieces mosaic and in a world full of other p other artists really trying to stand out what is one thing that you do to that what is one thing that, that you would thing? like people to know about your art um so i when i do my mosaics um i tend to gravitate towards birds and 
you know, I, there's a little bit, there is a reason why, and there's a little bit of a reason, like, I am just a crazy bird lady, and I love animals and, and nature. And I think one of the reasons why I do gravitate towards birds is because um, when I started doing these mosaics and I was cutting the pieces out, they, the pieces really mimicked the feathers of a bird and, and that texture of what a bird looks like. And then um, I... I'm a person that likes to research and find metaphorical meanings behind, you know, a lot of things that I create. So um, when I was researching birds, there's a lot of symbolism that go, ties in with a, like many religions and literary context and and everything. And so I took those birds into um, kind of telling an autobiographical story of myself and what how I see the world and how I'm perceiving it. And then um, I am also just loving to researching just the ornithology of birds and just how their behaviors are and how similar they are to humans. Um, and yeah, it's crazy. That's cool. That is, I, I've noticed that in your work. And I, I was wondering if there was a real connection there for you. Um, in your work yes. and um, and your work right now I know is hanging at Jules Bistro um, downtown St. Cloud mm -hmm. um, so people can go there and view your work and and this hour that our interview is being shared is also brought by brought to us by Jules Bistro so um, people will need to go in there and see your work and and um, and they can purchase pieces there also yes yes okay. they can Mm -hmm. Good. And they can also go to your website at Laura Liz Mosaic Biz. I love that. Um, dot com and, and purchase your art there and see your work there. They can do that also. Um, but let's look at some pieces. Let's, let's start with some of your pieces you shared here and some birds. And I, what I love about this one, too, is I you shared this process online. Um, so I was able to watch you work through this piece. Also, you shared process. Um, on your Facebook page and and on your Instagram, so it was really neat to see this this piece come together. Yes, and um, for this piece too, it was kind of a long time coming. Um, I started it with the drawings because I, you know, how I think a lot of artists experience this this kind of um, idea stage, but it's just one of those where you kind of stand like sit up straight in your bed and you're like, I've got this idea, and. Um, mm because I researched the behavior of, these are cedar wax wings. And so I researched the behavior of cedar wax wings and they're very social birds. They really congregate together and look out for each other quite a bit. And so one of the things that I thought was really sweet was that um, during the winter time is that they will line up on a branch and then they'll pick berries and then they'll pass the berries to one another so that everybody gets fed. And so I took that as inspiration to, to kind of um, do like this infinite circle motif of, you know, always passing it around. We're always looking out for each other, kind of, um, it's, it's like I said, infinite um, and just circles. So, and I, cause I love circles. Um, it's one of my favorite shapes, but the hardest thing to create with glass. Um, Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. This is beautiful, Laura. Absolutely beautiful. And, you. you know, I'm looking at this and each bird is unique. And, you know, not one is the same. Each one has a unique design on it. They're, it's beautiful. Thank you. It's difficult to do, I'm sure, with glass, too. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, the most, like I said, the most difficult thing is trying to do curves with glass mm -hmm. because glass tends to want to break more in a, in a geometrical pattern. Mm -hmm. um, and so with a lot of... When you look at these pieces, you know, you have to realize that everything is is hand cut and grinded down and and like each piece is has a purpose and had, you know, has to be that piece to fit because it's like a giant jigsaw puzzle, you know. Mm -hmm. Can I ask how long does it take for you to put a piece like this together? Um, so like I said with this one, the, the drawing concept of this one was really difficult for me. Um, so it kind of took me a long time to do and just kind of, um, cause the thing with mosaics too, unlike with painting, with painting, you know, you can go and you can correct your mistakes. You can, 
paint over whatever you want um, if you don't like what it is. But with mosaics, as soon as it's adhered down, you're kind of going with it. So I have to really, really plan um, plan out my designs and making sure that, all right, and just be confident in what I'm doing. So um, this one probably took me about, when I started doing actually applying the glass, it took me about three weeks to do. It's beautiful. Let's look at another piece. Oh yeah, that one's <laughs> that one's got to be one of my favorite ones that I've done so far. Mm -hmm. um, yes, so that one um, is called Silver Lining, and um, just because I think with with the pandemic and with everything that's going on, there have been you know, a lot of unfortunate events, but with this one, this one started, like, I kind of started on it, but then I finished it after when the pandemic or the quarantine happened. Um, and that's where I was kind of realizing that there are very many silver linings to this entire situation. Um, and so, and I'm kind of an old lady, so I do <laughs> subscribe to Birds and Blooms. And the issue that came out during that time was all about puffins. And um, I thought this would be such a great challenge and a great way for me to really push myself into kind of creating something new. And, and I've always liked the, you know, the opposites or the sim like symmetry part mm -hmm. of creating and design and making it more graphic design looking. And so this was kind of with that and then using whole different materials because the shiny parts on the fish is actually clear glass. Um, and then I used, yeah. and mirror can be really expensive to, to use for glass sheets. And so um, instead what I used was just that kind of textured um, clear glass. And then I used that aluminum tape that you use for your HVAC system. Um, I just taped that behind the glass. It was really hard and difficult to do, but that's the that's what I did to get that silver effect because I didn't want it shiny. I wanted it silver. So, so that's how uh, the fish were created. Wow! Very thoughtful. Very thoughtful. Here's the next one. Oh yes. So these are some of the newer pieces that I've been kind of creating, still working with that symmetrical um, or that symmetry kind of motif going on. And and I wanted to try butterflies or at least monarchs because I know that they have a huge significance for a lot of people in many different ways. Um, and for me, it's it was when I created this one, it was more of, you know, it's monarch season right now. And that one's like I said, is the most recent that I've done. And I wanted to push myself again to try to, you know, I was looking, I'm very, I'm very detailed in what I like to, I like to be detailed. And so I want, when I see a butterfly's wings and I see each one of those cells, I want to try to recreate that. So like on the wings, when you kind of see those divides of like those pieces, I want to recreate that in glass and see how I can do that. Because the grout is what goes in between all of that. And so I have to think about, like, what's the grout going to look like when I space these pieces apart? So, um, yeah. Wow. It's the center piece, too. Is that done with the, the same process you did with the fish also? Or is that different? Oh, no. That's actually... Um, so I get all of my glass from... Um, Michael stained glass studio here in St. Cloud and it's not to be confused with Michael's craft store it's actually a stained glass studio it's just these two wonderful people that kind of um, have their own stained glass store and and everything and they had this glass and I've had my eye on it forever <laughs> but the thing is it's like the glass does not they don't it's discontinued it's not made anymore and so it's kind of a antique glass and it's mirrored and it's like has this floral texture behind it so it's like this gold mirror um glass that's in between that and so I have to use it very sparingly because I only have a little bit left and like I said once I use it they don't make it anymore um so it's very special to me mm -hmm. for sure and here it becomes the focal point in the middle of the piece that makes sense that yeah makes sense. yeah 
<laughs> and then, um, yeah, with this one, it was kind of the same with the butterfly. I wanted to do this whole like night and day um, kind of thing where they were almost like, like they were supposed to be like a, a diptych, but, um, you know, I wanted to create something with the Luna moth because the Luna moth is something of Minnesota mm -hmm. and, um, the, the moon that's above the Luna moth, that is just a pure of am piece of amber glass that has mm -hmm. that, um, aluminum tape behind it to kind of illuminate it a little bit. And then, um, the glass that's kind of underneath the wings, that's actually mirrored seventies glass that I found at a garage sale for 25 cents. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and it's like that weird, I don't know what kind of glass it is, but it, it was really popular, I'm sure, back in the 60s, 70s, maybe even 50s. But um, I have a bunch of it, and I think it's really cool, mm -hmm. um, depending on how it's being used. Cool. Um, this is a piece of a gold crusted crane and, um, you know, with this one, it was kind of like, because it has a crown and it's gold, I wanted to use gold, um, mirror glass to kind of help, you know, with the whole, the whole aura around the bird. Um, and, you know, there wasn't too much specifics with this one. This one was where I was like kind of a pinpoint or it was kind of a turning point of, you know, I was just doing, when I was starting doing these mosaics, it was a lot of portraits of portraits of birds. And there wasn't anything to kind of push myself to be like, well, what else could I do with this medium? And so this was kind of the first time when I was kind of trying to play with, you know, the natural aesthetic of a bird where it's curvy and romantic curves and everything. And then juxtaposing that with more concrete and more geometric shapes and how does that kind of um play with each other and how can that i make that work and so i kind of thought since the bird already has this crown on it these like tassel or these feathers feathers that come out of its head i was kind of like how can i illuminate this and how can i make this more more um you know present and everything mm -hmm. it is beautiful it's a, that is a the, the circle again showing up, which you talked about is one of your favorite shapes to create and, and difficult to create, but there's the circle again. Yes. Beautiful. Yes. And then blue jay. Oh, the, you know what? Like, this is another one of my favorite pieces. And this one was a little bit older. This is when, um, this one, well, it's not very old. It was made in 2018, but... The inspiration for this one actually came from when I did a five-month residency in Jamestown, North Dakota. I lived up there and um, taught K through six um, elementary art, and so I was their art teacher for five months. And um, their whole animal for or what do you call it? Like their mascot was a blue jay. So I kind of thought, why don't I just do a blue jay and um, and so I kind of thought this is where I started also kind of playing with backgrounds. So, you know, not only do I have the bird, but like, how do I make the background playful or how do I kind of work that geometric design in with a, you know, the natural um, bird shape and everything. And so I really, this one was also a challenge with the background, but then it really helped me understand how to um, work with that kind of process the texture's incredible so much texture right away <laughs> that bird <laughs> thank you yeah all right we got the grackle grackle crackle yeah <laughs> so this was another one that um i was kind of kind of starting and finishing up after my residency at jamestown north dakota and um, whenever I was going into a class, it was kind of the last schools that I was um, teaching. And every time I was walking past into the going into their front door, there was always these grackles. And um, what fascinated me the most is that with grackles, they kind of people tend to think of them as crows, but really they're not. They're more of a nuisance. 
more of a nuisance than, than crows. But the thing that I really loved about them is that they have this really beautiful golden eye, um, this iris that's on their eye. And so I want to, and then their the sheen of their feathers is more oily looking. So it has more of like those really dark teals, purples, and blues. And so I wanted to kind of play with that um, bird and everything. And then that glass is that same 50s glass that I picked up at that garage sale. But um, it's, I like I said, I just love that glass. It's so, um, I don't know what you, like, what the best word for it is. Like, Funky. Uh, like, kitschy or yeah. just gaudy. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah, just gaudy. But I just love that kind of stuff, you know? It's yeah. kind of, like, things that people don't like, I like for some reason. And um, I'm just attracted to. And I don't know. It's it's great. It's um, So we have um, time for probably one more piece. Um, okay. Um, but I do want to, so if, cause there, there are a few more pieces that you have here. Is there a, uh, I know that people can connect and look at more of these pieces on your website, on your Facebook page, Laura Liz Mosaic Biz, Laura Liz Mosaic Biz, I can say that on Instagram, Laura Liz Mosaic <laughs> Biz. Um, so of, of the pieces we have left, I see here we have, um, I think what are some of the ones we have? Oh, we have, um. The Nuthatch, Mia, Dora, or house number sign? Is there one of those you'd like to kind of close with? Um, I think maybe let's, since we're, you know, looking at, at birds, let's, let's stick with the birds. Okay. Um, so, the so let's nut, do the Nuthatch. Nuthatch. Okay. There we go. So this one was actually done super recently. Um, I have a friend of mine that commissioned me to create this nut hatch for her because she lives on nut hatch road in um, St. Joe. And, um, and so she, she kind of explained to me too, that she's trying to collect for her house, just collect like little, little artworks or pieces about white breasted nut hatches. And so she loved what I did and asked me if I could do a piece for her. And I said, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, and so this is, I wanted to make sure that, you know, the nut hatch was apparent and that I could really get the detail in there um, as much as possible. But then I also wanted to add my own pizzazz of, you know, creating those really cool backgrounds and then adding the circle to it and um, and everything. So, yeah. Beautiful. The diagonal lines with the vertical lines and the circle. It's a very nice design. Very nice design. A lucky person, Thank you. for sure. <laughs> so we have a few more moments together. What is what is your dream project, Liz? Laura, Liz, Mosaic Biz. What's your dream project? <laughs> um, I think so, I have a few dream projects and and everything, but I think um, one of the things that I guess that I'm really missing right now as uh, is, is coming together as a community and because I am a teaching artist and I love teaching and being out in the community and sharing what I do with other people. And so one of the things that I was excited to do when I started doing my mosaic business was hopefully doing more public art pieces and really doing them with a community involvement. So having other people help in creating the public art pieces and really trying to beautify the environment that we're living in and um, having people say like, Hey, I had a part in creating that I laid this piece down. And so that's kind of one of my things that I'm really hoping that I can do in the future with my business. Wonderful. I definitely see that happening. Definitely. I've, 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 (laughs) you know, your work is in our community and, and, you know, and mosaic is one of those pieces a type of art too that can be collaborative you know people can can lay down a piece and then see it and go I you know I put that piece on on there and you know I was part of that so so I definitely yeah, see absolutely. that happening um is there anything else you would like to share with us before we leave today um I guess if you know there's a few things like if if I've been doing a lot of commissions with, for people. So, um, if that is anything that anyone's interested in doing, you know, um, I've been doing commissions of people's pets. Um, and so a lot of dogs and, and Christmas is coming around. So I've been kind of 
toying around with um, making these kind of globe ornaments made out of, you know, glass pieces for Christmas. So if anybody's interested in that, um, this is another one that I've been doing. I'm trying to make them super shiny because I know that's um, people get really attracted to those things, especially during Christmas. It's really beautiful and shiny Mm -hmm. stuff. So um, if anybody's interested, I do make small things. All right. Well, hopefully we'll, we'll make sure we make a plug here for get your holiday ornament in soon. Right? <laughs> get that order in <laughs> yes, soon. Yes, absolutely. So, so we can yeah, start getting Yeah, uh, because that's the other thing too is that mosaics do take a while to create. So I'm really, I don't know what this Christmas season will be like, but I'm hoping people won't wait till the last minute and expect that, you know, that it will only take me a few days to make. No, it will take me a couple weeks. So, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) and they can, they can contact you through Facebook and Instagram and also through your website to um, put those orders in and and do a commission if they'd like to, or purchase work that you already have, or go to Jewels and and see your work there um, in person and and be able to purchase it from there too, and get a cookie or something. You know? Who knows? Yes, yes, their <laughs> cookies are great. They are good. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> it was really nice visiting with you today, and um, take care. We'll hopefully see you soon. Yeah, thank you so much, Alicia. Thank you, everybody. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.